Hi friends, this is Satya Paul Deepak. I teach Indian Polity at Shankar IAS Academy. This video is part of series of videos where our staff from Shankar IAS Academy is explaining how to approach the questions asked in UPSC preliminary examination. Here we are not going to discuss the question but the techniques that should be applied in order to eliminate and arrive at the correct answer. Even if you don't know the answer but still by looking into the options by following various techniques will be able to arrive at the correct answer so that is the purpose of this video in today's video we are going to talk about indian polity questions there is a usual view that indian polity uh, questions are most interpretative in nature and most subjective of all the questions that is asked in the preliminary examination there is a truth in it but remember out of uh, 12 to 15 questions that is asked in preliminary examination 80 percent of the questions will be simple be straight to answer now only two or three questions is going to be interpretative in nature so what we are going to today is to take up 30 questions of different type the different approaches that should be followed in taking up these questions especially interpretative basis questions how to arrive at answer with various techniques will be discussed dear friends before going into the questions i would like to deal with a set of problems that uh, aspirant will face while taking up polity questions the first such problem is whether to follow the letter of the constitution or spirit of the constitution what do you mean by letter of the constitution the exact constitutional provisions whereas when i say spirit of the constitution it means why and for what purpose the particular provision has been introduced in the constitution and if that provision is removed from the constitution what will be the impact okay that is called as the spirit of the constitution for example we can take the example of election commission any constitutional body by spirit okay by logic should have some independence so whether election commission will be allowed to take post retirement jobs or not by logic by spirit if you answer they should not be allowed because if they are allowed for post retirement jobs what happens they will lose their independence so that is why many of the constitutional provisions for example cag and all post retirement job is not there but in indian constitution for certain reasons they have said election commissioner will be allowed will is not barred is not banned from post retirement job so supposing they are asking giving a statement in prelims examination there is a election commissioner can be appointed in post retirement jobs after the election commission post the answer the statement would be correct now we are answering by letter okay so now generally students will have a dilemma whether to follow the letter or spirit to solve this dilemma okay there are two types of questions one is philosophical questions or there may be some type of questions which is okay based on constitutional provisions philosophical questions or political theory based questions for example they are asking about okay nature of democracy nature of federalism nature of cabinet form of government like that you know they are asking philosophical based questions what we have to do is you have to go by the spirit that is the purpose of democracy purpose of other things because nowhere it would be written you know about democracy or federalism which is specific to india okay so you can go by the general meaning by the spirit of the constitution but if there is a constitutional provision go by the letter of it i'll give you another example by spirit judge's salary should not be reduced at all but as per the constitutional provision judge's salary can be reduced during financial emergency so when a statement exactly is taken verbatim from the constitution you have to go for the letter of the constitution otherwise okay generic terms that is used in indian polity like democracy federalism secularism and other things you can go by the spirit of the constitution now this is the first problem we have uh, dealt with now let us discuss the second problem that is interpretation based questions how to solve these questions you know whenever you have been given a statement in indian polity and you have two different interpretations at that time you first look into the options when we go to the questions now with example i will explain to you but i'll just tell you the technique first by looking into the options you will be arrive at the correct interpretation you have to apply both interpretation and see whether answer is coming for only one interpretation answer will come because you know when the examiner is taking the question he will be having one perspective only he will not thought otherwise so you would have chosen the option accordingly so by looking into the option you can arrive at the correct interpretation that is first one second is okay by applying a general logic you can arrive at the answer for example certain statements will be sweeping statements like all always and all so you can generally think that you know all always and all will not come we can go for a plain statement then third one is okay to go by book whichever uh, book that you have read okay on the basis of it you can go for the interpretation instead of you know worrying about multiple interpretations that is available that is uh, been given for a particular uh, concept it is better to go by a single book 
when you apply the interpretations in the same book you know mostly the answers will be correct the number the chances of you know getting a wrong answer will be very less okay so this is the second problem the third problem that you will face is whether to go for an updated judgment of the court of law because polity this is a big issue okay that is whatever you read in the indian polity book okay that is keep on being updated by the judiciary every other day we have uh, many judgments especially the current year we have plethora of judgments given by the judiciary so whether we have to answer based on the judicial judgment or whether it should we should be go going by the book okay so book versus judgment there will be certain judgments which are uh, once for all fixed for example basic structure doctrine case and on the bardi case judicial review okay is a basic structure doctrine and it is applicable for all the laws and all the constitutional amendments the change from you know procedure established by law to due process of law all of these things has been fixed and accepted there is no question on it so we can always go by the judgment in those cases now in some cases where the final judicial judgment is not given maybe the high court has given a judgment and there is an appeal in the supreme court then you can go by the book and usually upsc you know does not ask questions which is currently being discussed by the court of law but however in case they are asking for example recently money bill uh, controversy the now the court has finalized you know uh, money bill can be subjected to judicial review however earlier there was a dilemma whether it is subjected to judicial review or not so at that time you should have gone by book so now since the final judgment has been given no question on that you can say that money bill is subjected to judicial review something which has arrived judicial finality you can decide on it then the next problem that we face is fact versus opinion never answer based on your opinion how indian polity should be supposing you want the governor's office to be having fixed tenure okay i'm giving you a simple example so that you will be able to understand that is your desire opinion if they ask governor has a fixed tenure you cannot be saying governor has a fixed tenure it is a wrong statement okay because you should go by the constitutional provisions not by your own opinion for example right to privacy right now right to privacy has been a settled matter by the court of law but however if you see uh, some of our uh, politicians still contesting there is no right to privacy under article 21 so now how you have to go whether you have to go by fact or opinion you have to go by the fact okay you should not go by the opinion okay so that is why in a thorough reading and revision of indian constitution and its provision will help you score more okay rather than you know just assuming and answering then the other problem that you will be facing is convention versus constitution convention versus constitution here sometimes some of the practices are uh, followed in indian polity based on convention some as constitutional provision so you must know which is a convention which is a constitutional provision or for that matter what is a statutory provision look for these words according to indian constitution whether according to convention according to the statutory provision so accordingly when they are asking the statement may be true but it is not true for the particular given word for example there is pro term speaker pro term speaker is a convention okay as per indian constitution the pro term speaker presides over the first session of lok sabha like that if they are giving the statement they have used the word as per the indian constitution as per the indian constitution it is not right as per convention it is correct so you have to see whether a particular practice a particular provision is a convention or a constitutional provision or a statutory provision based on that you should be giving the answer and friends now we will go into the questions each one of the question each one of the question is of uh, different type and we are going to see how to deal with each of the question so we have discussed the problems main problems faced by upsc aspirants while taking polity questions now we are entering into the previous year upsc question paper every question uh, one by one question and we'll see what are the problems faced in dealing with that question how to overcome it so first type of questions that we are going to discuss is current affairs based questions like other subjects you know in polity also there is a inclination for the examiner to ask more questions from the current affairs part that is why even when you are revising the polity those uh, topics which were regularly appearing in the newspapers has to be dealt in depth multiple revisions is must and now this question last year okay on office of leader of opposition is asked because the leader of opposition post was continuously in news whether it is appointment of cba director whether it is appointment of lokpal or the leader of opposition post was not fully given to congress in these ways you know the office was in news continuously so whenever an office is in news immediately you have to go and study about the particular office so any preliminary reading okay any content that you look into any of the books or an online material if you put leader of opposition of india okay you will know that the first lok sabha Uh, the, did not have a uh, second single largest party 
in case the independence mps were the second largest and then came the communist party of india okay and we know that in lok sabha if a party has to be recognized with the leader of opposition post it should have 10% of mp seats of the total membership of lok sabha so which means uh, political party requires at least 55 seats in order to claim the leader of opposition post so here now this is very familiar to us it was coming in the newspaper itself that you know 10% of the mps is required in order to claim the leader of opposition post so three will definitely come then in the second statement okay the preliminary reading of the book itself in the lok sabha leader of opposition was recognized for the first time in 1969 yes okay first time recognition but remember statutory recognition this is where you may get confused statutory recognition that is through law office of leader of opposition was recognized only in the year 1977 so some may have a confusion but you know uh, simple reading of book we know second statement is also correct that first statement you now swatantra party you now upsc just not give option just like that because the first uh, political party to be given leader of opposition post was swatantra party that was in the year 1969 okay but it was not in the first lok sabha it was in fourth lok sabha 1969 so if you know the leader of opposition was first given 1969 to swatantra party then easily you can eliminate one as a wrong one okay so now the answer is should be either b or c because A is eliminated, D is eliminated. Okay, and two and three, we know that it is a correct answer. So, answer would be C. So the main uh, point that you have to take after this discussion is okay. Any constitutional office, any provision which is appearing in the newspaper, immediately that area has to be dealt with. And that too, in this last twenty days of uh, preliminary preparation, you have to heavily concentrate in these areas because polity is a very bulky subject. to cover everything revising everything at the last minute is not possible okay while revising give more stress on current affairs related uh, institutions current affairs related provisions from the constitution so some of them i've listed out jpc joint parliamentary committee after the rafael deal you know there was a request from the uh, opposition parties to establish a joint parliamentary committee the joint parliamentary committee you know what is this numbers what is this composition and all is decided by speaker only decides everything then money bill was a news breach of privilege privilege motion office of chief vigilance commissioner office of cbi and also lokpal so these institutions you have to read thoroughly okay fine next okay this question is an example where you will have a confusion whether to give answer by the provision of constitution or we should be going for judicial judgment so this question also has asked in last year 2018 the first statement parliament of india can place particular law in ninth schedule of the constitution of india this is a constitutional provision 31b article 31b talks about it the second provision the validity of law of a law placed in the ninth schedule cannot be examined by any court and no judgment can be made on it now this was an amendment that was made under 42nd amendment okay when indira gandhi made an amendment when she introduced the you know talked about this ninth schedule she said no law which is placed in ninth schedule shall be subjected to judicial review however a judicial finality has been given in 1980 in a court case the court has declared that judicial review is a basic structure doctrine and the ninth schedule any provision placed in ninth schedule also can be reviewed and we have the court also has clarified 1973 is the dividing date dividing year that is the case of nanda bharathi case before 1973 if you have placed any of the law within the ninth schedule it will be not subjected to judicial review however all other laws can be subjected to judicial review so now the statement is the validity of a law placed in ninth schedule cannot be examined by any court and no judgment can be made on it is a false statement judicial review is possible now the problem you will have is okay by the constitution you know ninth schedule the purpose of ninth schedule is no judicial review ninth schedule provides judicial immunity but however judiciary has said no it is not acceptable we will go for the review by which uh, aspect we have to go whether we have to go by constitutional provision or by judicial judgment yes yeah, since uh, judicial finality has been given no more question has been raised on this issue we can go for judicial judgment and say that judicial review is applicable so the second statement will be wrong so now what would be the correct answer a only is the right answer now some of the questions you know uh, is asked to test whether you know whether it is a statutory body and non statutory body okay now how to differentiate between statutory and non statutory bodies even if you don't know because you know it is very difficult to memorize all the bodies which are all statutory bodies which are all you know non statutory bodies statutory bodies 
will have powers with it. Uh, non statutory bodies mostly will be advisory in nature. So, what is the logic is we follow the principle of rule of law. So, if you are going to give power for any of the institution, any board, any tribunal, any institution, okay, you should be giving the powers only through law that is made in the parliament. Directly the prime minister cannot give power to any of the institution or bodies. So, if a statutory institution is having some powers, okay, definitely it is going to be a statutory body. Likewise, see Nitya Yoga is there, it is a non-statutory body, it has only a advisory power. Okay, so, in this question they are asked about NGT and Central Pollution Board. National Green Tribunal, we know it is a statutory body. So, the first statement NGT has been established by an act, whereas the CPSB has been created by an executive order of the government. That is the first part of the statement, you will say yes, it is correct, NGT is a statutory body. CPCB whether it is a statutory body or an executive or a non-statutory body. See, when I say executive order it means it is a non-statutory body. So, whether it is a statutory or non-statutory body, it is a statutory body CPCB that is Central Pollution Control Board is a statutory body. Now, there is an act that is uh, prevention of pollution in water act from that act only CPCB was being created. Later on, you know, Prevention of Air Pollution Act also has given the recognition for CPC, given additional powers for uh, Central Pollution Control Board. So, now uh, Central Pollution Control Board as an authority, okay, it can give license to vehicles, it can, you know, seal uh, certain uh, institutions, you know, which is not uh, adhering to pollution standards and all, okay. So, the second statement, you know, with itself tells that CPC is having a statutory power and by logic also by just our regular reading of newspaper, we know it has certain powers. So, it should be a statutory body, okay. So, first statement is wrong, second statement is correct. So, answer is two only. Next type of question is opinion based question, okay. See uh, what actually I am trying to do is I have already explained to you in short earlier what are the problems that will be faced during taking up the preliminary uh, examination questions. Now I am uh, dealing with uh, each one of the question, I am giving example for each one of the problems that would be faced for your better understanding. So, some of the questions will be opinion based, okay. As we discussed already right to privacy is protected as an instructed part of right to life and personal liberty. So, this is a statement which of the following in the constitution of India correctly and appropriately imply the above statement. See here they are not asking whether right to privacy is a right under right, right to life and personal liberty and all because that is the contestation some having the opinion right to privacy is part of right to life and liberty. Some people are saying no it is not intrinsic part of right to life and personal liberty. So, that is opinion based but however, they have given it to the statement itself to clarify they are telling the aspirants this is a stand taken by the examiner right to privacy is protected under right to life and personal liberty. But here the question part is which of the following in the constitution of India correctly and appropriately imply the above statement. So, as we know all article 21 and uh, the freedom guaranteed in the part 3 of the Indian constitution that is fundamental rights part. Article 14 you know uh, will not directly be related to right to privacy. Article 14 talks about right to equality, Article 17 about untouchability and Article 24 right against exploitation. So, the appropriate answer will be C. It is an easy question, but the, remember okay, whenever in case if they are asking opinion based question, do not go by the opinion, go by the court's final judgment. What is the court has declared very recently, go by that judgment. Uh, question number 5, it talks about certain questions where you have to understand the question by looking at the keywords. Now, here with reference to the election of president of India, consider the following statement. The value of vote of each MLA varies from state to state. The word state to state is very important. That is because not all the MLAs of all the states represent the same number of population. For example, supposing if you take UP, okay, if an MLA in UP is representing 20 lakh people, MLA in Tamil Nadu will be representing 10 lakh people. Now, when MLAs from two different states is taking part in the election of the president, their vote value should be different naturally. If you are saying both of them is say, having same value, it is like undermining the people of UP, okay, because uh, most number of people is represented by a UP MLA compared to the number of people represented by the MLA in Tamil Nadu. So, the value of the vote of each MLA varies from state to state. Now, what problem would you have faced? Those who have taken last year's examination, what problem they faced is, they were thinking, is it not the population of all the constituencies are same? So, since all the population of all the constituencies are same, naturally vote value of all the MLA should be equal. Maybe 
MLA vote value in the presidential election is not equal to MP's vote value. That everybody knows. But between MLA's, they will be thinking that it is equal. Remember, vote value of MLA within state is equal. Okay, because under the delimitation process, we have just uh, what is delimitation process? You know, two things are there. One is allocation of seats to Lok Sabha, redrawing the boundaries of constituencies. Now, when allocation of seats uh, to Lok Sabha has been freezed, 1971. Meaning, it is based on 1971 census only, we are following the same thing. But re-drawing the boundaries of the constituencies, okay, we have done it in the year 2001. That is after census 2001, we have gone for the redrawing of the boundaries of the constituencies. So, now what happened is, we have not changed the number of constituencies, but we have changed the uh, boundaries of uh, the states. So, now what happens is, the population is uh, different between different constituencies. Okay, same number of MLAs is not being represented. So, the first statement, no, the value of vote val vote of each MLA varies like that only if they have given, then it would have been a confusion. You would have been thinking that within the state, vote value of each MLA is same. That would have created a confusion. The key word here is state to state. So, now between states. So, when you compare within states, if you know this, that MLA of one state represents more number of uh, people compared to smaller states, then automatically you will say this is a correct one. And second, the vote value of MPs of Lok Sabha is more than the vote value of uh, MPs of Rajya Sabha. This is wrong statement. Okay, why it is a wrong statement? That is because okay, how we arrive at the vote value of total number of MPs? First, we will calculate vote value of all MLAs of all states. Then we will divide it by okay the total number of MPs who take part in presidential. So, automatically if all the vote value of all the MPs is going to be the same, there is not going to be different, there is no difference between Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha MPs. So, the second statement is wrong, the vote value of vote of MPs of Lok Sabha, more the value of vote of MPs of Rajya Sabha, okay, all of their vote values are the same. So, one is the correct answer, okay, here there is another interpretation that you may give, okay. Calculating the vote value of all the MPs of Lok Sabha, Lok Sabha has how many MPs? 545, Rajya Sabha 245. Okay, so you may be saying the vote value of all the MPs may be equal, but since Lok Sabha MPs are uh, 545, their vote value is more. Okay, but here now when they say the value of the vote of MPs, which means single vote they are talking about, not vote value of all the votes of the MPs. So don't go for the other interpretation here. The vote value of the vote of MPs means single MP. So, every MP, whether it is Rajya Sabha or Lok Sabha MP, it is equal only. So, second statement is wrong. So, answer would be one only. Then, uh, political theory or philosophy based questions. Okay, I am taking some three, four type of political theory questions and I will let you know how to arrive at the correct answer. Okay, so just apply the logic. Okay, so what are the logic? One of the logic is good put the government filter. Now, here in this question, which one of the following reflects the nicest and appropriate relationship between law and liberty? Okay, so this was a great dilemma question. Now, first uh, statement, let us see. If there are more laws, there is less liberty. It may appear to be correct, but see the keywords, nicest and appropriate relationship between law and liberty. So, uh, when uh, sometimes in order to ensure liberty, we have to create law. For example, uh, you know, to ensure freedom of press, freedom of speech and expression, and other things we need law okay so let us keep on hold it cannot be most appropriate if there are no laws there is no liberty okay what will happen if this uh, there is no law the might will be right and what will happen is only those people who are stronger those people have uh, uh, enough uh, money power and muscle power will have the say will have the liberty the poor and the powerless will not be enjoying the liberty so if there should be liberty for all there should be law Okay, so this statement there is there are if there are no laws there is no liberty is correct, but wait, you should not always you know uh, jump and go and mark in the OMR immediately after finding the correct answer. You have to eliminate all other options then only arrive at the correct answer then go into the marking of OMR. Now the third statement let us see if there is liberty laws have to be made by the people. Okay, this uh, is, as such a statement yes okay the true liberty is where laws will have to be made by the people or at least by the representatives of the people okay but you know it is one of the case the second case is there shall be liberty even if law is created by the representatives of people and fourth if law are changed too often liberty is in danger yes when we are changing the law too often 
okay when there is no predictability of the law there is liberty in, uh, maybe today there is freedom of press suddenly tomorrow the freedom of press is removed by some of the restrictions the liberty of the individual is at stake so when laws are changed too often liberty is in danger so this statement also appears to be correct now this is a political theory question okay so political science students know that you know uh, said by john locke so they will easily put this answer but however even a common person can easily say b is the right answer you will be having a conflict with b and d only right that is because this can be eliminated okay so relatively it is not talking about the appropriate relation third one also does not talk about the appropriate relation between law and liberty but b and d is talking about it so now there is a dilemma which option to be uh, choosing whether b or d so this is where this examination is about picking up bureaucrats okay your fu future bureaucrats okay and in the perspective of bureaucrats b statement stands to be more relevant because according to the government government requires law in order to provide liberty to all individuals whereas an activist will see change of law as a danger to his liberty okay but an appropriate government government for the people okay when they are change the law to enhance the power of the people now whether to take this question in the perspective of an activist or pers perspective of a government okay you take it in the perspective of a government because this examination to recruit the bureaucrats okay so even if you are not knowing political science okay a normal student just by reading the statement and applying the government filter okay in the perspective of the bureaucrat if you are going to give the answers then you will be able to give the correct answer for philosophy based questions okay or political theory based questions then once again another type of political theory question which can be uh, solved by elimination method now what is rule of law now rule of law okay as such whether it is defined in the constitution you know this is what i was talking about uh, earlier letter was a spirit whether any provision according to uh, indian constitution is given for rule of law no okay but it should be understood by spirit there is no letter but you should be understanding by the spirit meaning there should be always a law on the basis of law only administration has to be carried out the whimsies and fancies of the rulers or bureaucrats should not be there okay according to one one's own own wish one's own desire administration cannot be carried out first if any uh, uh, prime minister chief minister ministers or bureaucrats has to do something first they have to create a law in the legislature then with the authority of the law they have to take measures okay so that is the meaning of rule of law it is opposed to rule of men now this if you apply this spirit no whether rule of law means limitation of powers yes you don't give excessive powers you put limitations on the powers of uh, the constitutional authorities telling that you should work within the limitation of rule of law only the law that is created equality before law will also come okay because you know you have a law it should be applying it in equally among people if you are differentially applying it there is no rule of law there is no limitation of power the inequal application of law is excessive power in other words so now third statement people's responsibility to the government they are talking about fundamental duty now fundamental duty will not come because it is a responsibility of the people okay to the government okay rule of law where is talking about the relationship between government to the people how government can use its power over the people okay so the third statement is people centric so automatically you can take it out third one in liberty and civil rights okay automatically liberty and civil rights is important if that is not there rule of law will not be there this is the general meaning by spirit you know liberty and civil rights must be there okay now three should not be there right so option a can be eliminated option uh, d also can be eliminated now the doubt is between two and third option that is option b and option c you will be getting confused okay now 1 to 4 and 2 for 1 to 4 means limitation of power equality before law and liberty and civil rights okay now one will definitely be coming okay two also will be coming so naturally you can settle for c in option b they have not mentioned number 1 rule of law necessary limitation of power will come so here you know uh, by elimination method only we are arriving at the answer you know because rule of law is defined differently for example in lakshmikan book if you see dicey has defined rule of law differently in indian context rule of law is uh, you know defined uh, differently so you will be having always a dilemma okay by which you have to go so in question paper in the examination all you have to go by the options by eliminating the options you have to arrive at the answers for political theory related questions or political philosophy related questions okay so be practical be logical don't worry you know that this is a you know a, a political philosophy question theory question only political science or pubat students can answer 
So even by common understanding, common reading of polity, you can do it. Okay. Now another important thing, according to this is very important in polity, as I discussed now, whether it is according to constitution, or the whether according to convention or statutory provision, you must clearly know. Okay. So these type of questions. For example, this question, in the election for Lok Sabha or State Assembly, the winning candidate must get at least fifty percent of the votes polled to be declared elected. This is wrong. It's not at least fifty percent. It is. plurality of votes meaning whichever candidate is getting maximum number of votes will be cleared as winner 50% means majority of votes is very difficult to get okay and that to multi party system and a multicultural society like india getting 50% is plus 1 it's not possible possible at all so by logic itself you can say it is wrong and uh, since we are all most of us are taking part in elections we easily say it is you know not 50% but it is plurality of votes maximum number of votes Okay, so first statement would be wrong. Second, according to the provisions laid down in the Constitution of India, in Lok Sabha, the Speaker's post goes to the majority party and Deputy Speaker to the opposition. Yes, from 1969 they have recognized opposition leader's post. Sorry, 1969, 1977 I said it has been made. Okay, statutory provision, and which one opposition leader only? So the Lok Sabha, uh, the Speaker's post goes to the majority party. Yes, this is true. But this is by convention. Uh, if they uh, want to make a uh, person from opposition party, that person also can be made as a speaker. Okay, so it is just a convention. It is not given in the constitution. By con by convention only, majority party person will become the speaker. Deputy speaker goes to the opposition. This can be changed also. For example, two thousand four to two two thousand nine. Okay, Somnath Chatterjee, who belonged to Communist Party, okay, was the speaker. He did not belong to the majority party. Okay. Likewise, the present deputy speaker, deputy speaker of the recently concluded Lok Sabha, is from ADMK. Okay, which is one of the you know partners of the majority party. A member or representative from opposition party was not given the deputy speaker's post. Okay, so this is the key word constitution. You have to look. People would have missed the word constitution. As per convention, this is correct, but as per constitution, it is wrong. Okay, so. most of them would have made a mistake here only so look for the keyword according to so you must know whether it is according to constitution convention or statutory provision now which is the correct uh, answer they have asked for which is correct neither one nor two is correct both of them are wrong statements then uh, contradicting verdicts for example question number 9 right to vote and right to be elected in india whether it is a fundamental right natural right constitutional right and legal right now you know that it is not a fundamental right it is not a natural right now your confusion will be between constitutional right as well as legal right i see sometimes court give contradicting verdicts okay according to the context in one case the court has said right to vote is a constitutional right in one case they have said it is a legal right okay in case of contradictions okay what should we do you should apply three principles one is apply logic okay and see see here when you apply logic what are rights rights are claims of the individual against a state okay now these claims okay if it is accepted as justified then it can be called as a rights okay or in other words rights are justified claims when is accepted by society okay for society accepts that it is a basic claim of the individual against it then it is called as a moral right okay example human rights okay then uh, if a claim is accepted by state okay it is called as a legal right see here i am using the word capital l this legal right is used okay just to differentiate it with human rights okay this uh, completely changes in indian context in indian context rights are divided into constitutional rights statutory rights rights which is given in the constitution is called as constitutional rights statute is called as a statutory rights okay statutory rights is also interchangeably is called as legal rights but in fact technically you have to say statutory rights but people interchangeably use the word legal rights that is why the confusion is now under constitutional rights you have fundamental rights and other constitutional legal rights so part 3 of indian constitution whatever rights is there we will say fundamental rights the remaining part is called as other constitutional legal rights you have to exactly use the technical term other constitutional rights but people interchangeably use legal rights for this also that is the confusion okay so now by logic okay are they mentioning the uh, if you say right to vote and elected to be india is a legal right it is not a right based on statutory right 
it is coming under the constitution if you say legal right only it means that the right is only based on the law but it is based on the constitutional provisions 325 326 will come okay so you can go for a constitutional right okay as the correct answer the book also ncrt also says it is a constitutional right and uh, you know some people will still argue that no sir it is legal rights also dear friends this is where you must understand in questions like this come contradictory verdicts are there especially on political theory questions okay don't keep thinking overthinking if you keep overthinking you know the consequent questions that you will face there also you will have the impact so just think a little bit and by some logic arrive at the answer either constitutional right or legal right now the answer key depends upon the whimsas of upsc upsc may give it constitutional right or legal right uh, you know whichever source they are referring to so in k questions like this i told no there will be like two or three questions only in the out of entire 100 questions so don't worry about uh, don't worry about these uh, two and three questions definitely attend it but attend it in the second round okay so at the time you know why i am saying do it in the second round first time you will be keep thinking you are not be able to take any decision but first round after completing after answering substantial number of questions now you will uh, have some confidence say 35 to 40 questions if you have answered already okay you will have confidence at that time you know questions like this you will take right decisions and moreover even if it goes wrong okay 50% the questions will be correct so at the end you will be getting positive marks only okay extra marks only so interpretation based questions two or three questions which is there take it in the second round okay don't overthink okay just put, apply some logic or uh, whatever there is given by the in the book you now accordingly answer and come logic and elimination method once again here the election commission of india is a five member body okay is it a five member body it is a multi member body okay some of you may think it is a three member body that is also wrong statement because according to the constitution okay it is a multi member body union ministry of home affairs decides the election schedule for the conduct of both general election by election we know the government will not be responsible it is completely election commission okay so now uh, two will definitely not come by logic because if uh, home ministry is deciding the election now they will con- be conducting the election uh, is favorable to the ruling party so the election date okay should be carried out by the election commission only second sto- statement completely wrong if you know that alone okay simple first statement won't come second statement won't come and this will also not come so you are arri- arriving at the answer that option d is the right answer because the third statement no election commission resolves the disputes relating to splits and merger of recognition of political parties you know splits and mergers you would have learnt in anti defection law only their election commission in whether it is coming or not speaker only come okay so you may have a doubt third uh, statement whether it is uh, completely wrong or correct okay there there will be a dilemma because uh, constitution specifically mentions election commission resolves the disputes related to election sh- symbol okay whenever there is a split or uh, merger of a recognized political party okay so the words uh, election symbol is not there no other things are not there who is the correct party so you may get a doubt in this third statement but however second statement logically will not come automatically by elimination method you will be able to arrive at the answer so that is why when you see some statements if it is appearing to be confusing you are not able to know whether it is a correct statement or wrong statement go by option okay by one eliminating one statement by clearly knowing one statement whether it is completely correct or completely wrong thereby you can eliminate you know maximum number of options sometimes three options will be deleted so you will arrive at one definite option you can cu- arrive at the correct answer okay in case of uh, two answers okay two options is coming after all elimination then go by 50 50 rule which means think by some logic and put the put that answer and come mostly you will get it right okay with uh, 80 percentage coverage of syllabus and good preparation okay whenever you are making a logical decision on a 50 50 question when you have a doubt between two options okay you can think and immediately put a option definitely it will be correct only okay maximum probability the chances of getting uh, wrong is very less concept clarity of article 21 this is very important okay now judicial review in india what does it mean now judicial review has it been defined anywhere in the constitution no but the word judicial review whether there is in the constitution no okay only article 13 says 
that you know in case of fundamental right is violated judicial uh, review is possible judiciary come and strike down the strike down the law okay so let us read each one of the statement and try to understand what is the correct statement the power of the judiciary to pronounce upon the constitutionality of laws and executive orders yes this statement is correct now here there you will be having a doubt executive order is given constitutionality of laws with one doubt that will be faced by students is okay earlier article 21 it um, used the word procedure established by law not due process of law okay so they were using procedure established by law meaning only you know arbitrary actions executive order okay article 21 gave protection against arbitrary against arbitrary executive action only okay that is before okay when they use the word procedure established by law but as we know they have changed the word to due process of law now the meaning of the word article 21 procedure established by law is due process of law okay so now it is not only against arbitrary executive action but also it is against arbitrary legislative action okay so now constitutionality of laws under article 21 as well as executive orders both is correct but as i said already even when you are arriving at the correct answer first itself don't immediately go and mark oma sheet first just check whether option b option c and d is valid or not okay sometimes you know they may be most appropriate answer okay let us look at the option b the power of the judiciary to question the wisdom of the laws enacted by the legislation here use the word wisdom wisdom means what experience okay it is not uh, the validity constitutional validity of the laws they are talking of wisdom of laws meaning okay the law makers mps would have created a law for a particular purpose okay so the judiciary cannot question the purpose the judiciary should check only whether the constitution uh, provisions has been adhered to or not so second one will not come the power of judiciary to review all the legislative enactments before they are assented to by the president okay the review judicial review will follow only after assent that you know by logic okay then the power of the judiciary to review its own judgment given earlier in its different cases this is article 137 which talks about review petition review petition is uh, different from judicial review when judiciary reviews the action of executive and legislature it is called as judicial review when judiciary reviews its own judgment it is called as review petition article 137 so this also will not come this clarity should be there what is the difference between judicial review and review petition okay uh, now if they are asking whether we are following procedure established by law or due process of law in india if they ask in under original constitution we are following procedure established by law as of now article 21 is based on due process of law so in prelims examination if they are asking be cl clear article 21 talks about due process of law only okay if they are giving option article 21 deals with procedure established by law option a option b due process of law go for due process of law then interpretation based questions okay sometimes there will be interpretation based questions okay how to achieve it by elimination method uh, which of the following are not necessarily the consequence of the proclamation of presidential rule in a state okay now dissolution of state legislative assembly it is a consequence removal of council of ministers of a state is also a consequence but dissolution of lok lok sabha local body is not a consequence here students will face one problem of interpretation because in sr bommai case okay the court has clarified that when the presidential rule is uh, declared in a state there are two chances to or two options with the state legislative assembly either it it can be suspended or dissolved but remember the bommai case has said first you have to suspend only after getting approval from parliament you have to dissolve the state legislative assembly so whenever a presidential rule is proclaimed in a state there is no direct it is not necessary that you know the state legislative assembly shall be dissolved okay so you may say the first statement is also not a consequence not a, not not necessarily a consequence because okay uh, the suspension of state legislative assembly is the first consequence in case of approval of parliament only dissolution of state legislative assembly will come so the first statement is not a direct consequence uh, direct consequence like that you may interpret some of you may interpret like that also but this is where you have to go by elimination method you have doubt in interpretation go to the uh, key and see options and see supposing if you are considering the first statement as a, not a consequence first statement as not a consequence not necessarily a consequence then answer will be 1 and 3 okay then 
if you say only local bodies okay dissolution of state legislative assembly is a consequence removal of council of ministers in a state is a consequence uh, the third one is also only a not a consequence so your answer should be three only okay so you are arriving at answers by applying both the interpretations but okay if you apply the first statement not a consequence like that one and three should come you have an answer but if you think that first statement is a consequence answer should be only three which is not available here okay so the simple reading we won't you know immediately get this uh, difference between resolution and the suspension but however the person who has taken the question just they wanted to know that the first consequence of proclamation of presidential rule is only removal of council of ministers and suspension of the state legislative assembly not the dissolution okay so your answer is one and three only so this is how we have to arrive if there is a problem in interpretation automatically by seeing the uh, options you can arrive at the correct level of interpretation okay so if two are interpretations available i am concluding two and interpretations that are simple apply both interpretations and see what is the options are coming if there is an option that is available there then that that interpretation of yours is right and another way of dealing with interpretation based question is keyword okay now which of the following are envisaged by the envisaged as right against exploitation in the constitution of india the question you no know, the keyword is constitution of india because okay abolition of un untouchability is also against exploitation only okay untouchability is exploitation when you abolish untouchability it is against exploitation only but they have given the word in the constitution of india okay so you can go for point number 1 point number 4 protection of interest of minorities once again it is a uh, in article 29 and 30 okay which is not you know related to right against exploitation it is a religious freedom so now can see that you know two options one and four only is correct here you may have a dilemma you may say abolition of untouchability also so you may be having a dilemma with one to four also so in that case only go for the keyword if you have a problem in interpretation okay by spirit you are saying you know abolition of untouchability uh, will come under right against exploitation only but in indian constitution okay it is given under right to equality so if they say that you know untouchability is considered to be exploitation that statement is correct they say which of the following are envisaged what is the meaning of the word envisaged okay thought about or spoken about by the constitution so by constitution it is prohibition of trafficking of uh, in human beings and prohibition of employment of children in factories and mines those two are the uh, provisions under right against exploitation next question okay once again letter was a spirit okay so this is an example this question is a political theory question which you can decide by letter was a spirit now out of the following statement choose one of the bring out the principle underlying the cabinet form of government first statement an arrangement for minimizing the criticism against uh, the government whose responsibilities are complex and hard to carry out to the satisfaction of all okay uh, it's it's not about minimizing the criticism okay so first statement uh, it is evident it is wrong a mechanism for speeding up the activities of the government whose responsibilities are increasing uh, day by day of course this statement as such is correct for a cabinet system the purpose of cabinet as an institution this uh, statement appears to be correct so you may think b is correct c <coughs> a mechanism of parliamentary democracy for ensuring collective responsibility of the government to the people okay now why do we have see here see this is where once again underline cabinet form of government now here there is nowhere cabinet form of government is defined in indian constitution except we know in article 352 the word cabinet has been mentioned for what purpose to tell that you know during uh, national emergency declaration signature should be obtained from all the cabinet ministers there is no definition of the word cabinet and here they have not used the cabinet as an institution uh, here see it is a cabinet is a mechanism for speeding up the activities of the government whose responsibilities are increasing day by day but cabinet form of government they have given so the purpose you have to see spirit you have to answer by spirit okay so very simple political theory based questions no okay uh, political theory based questions when they are asking go by the spirit and answer so here political theory cabinet form of government what is the spirit behind cabinet form of government to have collective responsibility but exactly there is a provision of the constitution is there then you answer by letter that is why i have added this point here very important 
if it is political theory you have to answer by spirit if it is provision of constitution you have to answer by letter now you know uh, right to life against uh, private individual uh, listen carefully right to life is there in article 21 but it is against state not against private individual but logically if an individual is killed okay it is a very bad thing and you know the very sacrosanct thing the life itself is eliminated so life is a fundamental right whether it is uh, eliminated by government or whether it is eliminated by a private individual but for practical purposes the constitution has said right to life and liberty uh, right, right to life is against state only not against private individual if a private uh, individual is murdering another person he will be subjected to legal right violation only case will be filed in an ordinary court and they will be uh, uh, continuing with the prosecution but when state kills an individual it will be seen as violation of fundamental right and the matter will be taken up by the supreme court directly or the high court directly okay, that that's the difference see uh, by spirit by political theory right to life is there against the state as well as private individual right because the private uh, individual also cannot kill a, kill another individual state also cannot kill but for constitutional provision they are saying right to life is a fundamental right according to article 21 it is not available against private individual so when there is a explicit provision right to life article 21 which says that it is not against private individual now whether you have to go by the spirit of the provision or letter of the provision you have to go by the letter of the provision because there is explicit constitutional provision you can apply only spirit of the provision only when there is a political theory concepts political concepts like democracy federalism cabinet form of government etc etc okay so uh, when you have a dilemma between b and c the answer would be c for question number 14 okay then which of the following is not a feature of indian federalism okay now this is also a political theory okay now uh, here even though federalism is a political theory now they have clearly mentioned indian federalism keyword okay now should we answer based on the letter of the constitution or spirit of the constitution since here they have said indian federalism and they have used the constitutional provisions you go by letter here because actually if you say a federal country there should be equal representation in rajya sabha but unequal representation in rajya sabha is a unique feature for indian federalism so here you have to go by the spirit of the indian constitution sorry letter of the indian constitution because the provisions are given there is an independent judiciary in india yes powers has been clearly divided between the central and state yes the unequal representation in rajya sabha yes okay so three statements would be correct it is the result of agreement among the federating units usually a federalism this statement is correct but by looking at the letter of indian constitution this statement is not correct why because in indian federalism is based on the principle of holding together not coming together okay so whenever there is a common question political theory question like federalism democracy is asked they put the india filter okay and in the options you have provisions in the constitution then it means it is a question not based on political theory it is a based on constitutional provision so you have to go by the letter 